Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, I got some questions in the comments uh, about what exactly do I mean by um, like a free tier and pricing tiers and um, what my possible thoughts on why they're not doing this. And I just want to kind of clearly explain like, like what a free trial is, what does an open and accessible platform mean, like those kind of things. So I created some mock pricing tiers, which are just modeled after generic SaaS tiers. None of these numbers or figures mean anything at all. They're not taken from Palantir. They're just made up out of thin air. So just a heads up, full disclosure there. Um, but this is what I would expect if I went to palantir.com and I wanted to hit sign up or you know get started, I would be able to access something like this uh, where there's a free tier for developers that have just the minimum you would need in order to get certified on the platform. Get familiar with the platform. Uh, the next level up would be startup where maybe you're processing some small workloads as a small business or a small company. Next up from that would be Pro, and next up from that would be Enterprise, right, where everything's unlimited. Uh, the addition of SSO for both Pro and um, Enterprise is super important, so SSO is single sign-on. That's required because a lot of these companies, you need to be onboarded and offboarded within a single system so that your credentials aren't floating around after someone's uh, exited the company or they're having trouble getting access to systems when they onboard with the company. So SSO is really important and a great way to drive people up, um, and this is a funnel, so like Small companies become big companies, right? That's the history of uh, AWS, how it built its revenue. It built it largely off the backs of small startups. Uh, Lyft being a great example that one year, I believe, negotiated a $300 million spend with AWS um, because its business had grown so much on that platform. So small companies become big ones and you're constantly trying to push customers from one level up to the next level. And then you have your enterprise sales team kicking in here where all the big money's made. So this is what I would be suggesting, and right under here actually, what there should also be is um, get certified, right? Certification and training. To do this, you have to have uh, customer support, right? There needs to be certain types of customer support. One for like free and startup uh, would probably be email only. For pro and enterprise, uh, you could have a couple of options. One would be chat-based support and then dedicated support, and they would all have different pricing tiers. You should be able to select what kind of support you want as um, part of the onboarding. So after I hit select here, there should be an option to choose what kind of customer support I want. Um, and, and perhaps only enterprise customers get like, you know, um, like a dedicated support engineer. And that could be your forward deployed engineer. Um, I see no reason that they can't do that now because I do know that they have a support team. They mention it in Stack Overflow. So there's clearly a support team. I don't know how automated it is, how many people there are, um, but they could clearly do that. So I don't see that as a reason as to why they're not doing this now. I also don't see the automatic deployments as a reason they're not doing this now because they have Apollo, they have the best, you know, the, be the best in class way to automatically provision environments. They also have multi-tenant SaaS, which I'm in now currently. I'm in a multi-tenant SaaS environment. They claimed on their blog that most of their new commercial customers opt for multi-tenant SaaS. So there's no reason they can't be doing this right now, in my opinion. There's one potential reason that they're not doing this, and I don't believe this to be the case, is that maybe the platform's too buggy to um, allow people to onboard this way. And that there always needs to be some kind of engineering support when setting up new environments. I don't personally believe that's the case because I haven't encountered those kind of issues. I would have if it was that bad. Um, so I've only encountered one bug on the platform, and bugs are normal. Like I, plenty of the team, plenty of the tools I use at work have bugs. We file bug reports. That's a normal thing. No platform is bug free. Um, but I've only encountered one bug, so I can't really believe that platform instability is the reason they're not doing this. Um, so I. I don't know what the reason is. I think it largely comes down to strategy. Maybe they believe that by withholding the platform, they're generating demand or creating a mystique around it. They certainly are doing that, but they're also pissing people off. So <laughs> I think at the end of the day, it's much more important. Maybe the, the one other potential reason is they want their competition to get their hands on it and start doing benchmarks. Maybe they feel that that would be unfair to them in some way. Um, or you know, they, maybe they're reporting every problem they see in the platform, but that's normal. That's just part of competition, dude. Like check out the competition between Databricks and Snowflake right now. It's hilarious and it's full bore, like the, they're going after each other. So that's gonna happen. You just, you're gonna have to put on those big boy pants and get ready to, to get hit in the gut a few times by your competition. That's good for you. You know, that kind of thing, um, I think really surfaces where you're being, um, where, you're, where your strategy and vision aren't meshing with market realities. So that's a good thing for you to, to get your platform subject to criticism and um, maybe maybe permeate the bubble a little bit. So I don't know why they're not doing this though, but this is what I expect to see, this is what I wanna see. Uh, and I think it's, ex do they have to do it? Like you, there's no way around this in my opinion, if you're gonna scale this platform to 
tens of thousands of customers, which they absolutely need to, to do to, to, to compete, in my opinion, and to take advantage of that funnel of small companies becoming big companies because the big companies today might not be big tomorrow. And you might miss out on the next, you know, Amazon or the next Apple building value on your platform. So you absolutely have to do this and you don't do it through SPACs. Right? So you don't need SPACs if you adopt this strategy because you will have customers who grow organically on your platform. So that's my thoughts. This is what this means. Uh, this is what I'd like to see. And if anyone has questions or um, you know, wants further clarity, just, just drop a line in the comments and I will respond. Thanks, everyone.